I think when I read that sweet story of old, when Jesus was here among men, how he called little children as lambs to his fold. I should like to have been with them then. I wish that his hands had been placed on my head, that his arms had been thrown around me, and that I might have seen his kind look when he said, let the children come unto me. Yet still to his presence in prayer we may go and know that we share in his love. And if I thus earnestly serve him below, I shall see him and serve him above. Aren't those beautiful words? Let me just read that last one. Yet still to his presence in prayer we may go and know that we share in his love. And if we thus earnestly serve him below, we shall see him, we shall see him and serve him above. Oh my goodness, my goodness. I am so happy the Lord brought that song, that old hymn to my heart, looked it up. Well, this is December 26th, the day after, but I'm still going to wish you a Merry Christmas because I don't believe it's one day. I believe it's 365 days, as a matter of fact, <laughs> that we celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that you all had a wonderful Christmas with family. We had a wonderful Christmas. Absolutely wonderful. Full of family fun. Uh, my oldest grandson, Bryson, and his wife, and she's a she's a PA, so she's right on the top of the medical stuff. Uh, they had been exposed to the plague. And so we opened up the doors out onto my daughter's porch and Martha set the most beautiful round table, linens, everything, candles, the whole nine yards out there for the two of them. And they were still able to hear and participate. They sat in the doorway. <laughs> we opened presents and all. Sat out there with the dog. Poor dog couldn't figure out why he couldn't come in. <laughs> And then the end, and I put a picture on there, my favorite picture, we had a lot of family pictures. My fa favorite picture was I baked Jesus a birthday cake. And I put an eight on there for all of you too, and eight candles for 2022. And we are going to serve him. I believe that with all my heart. We're going to serve him like we've never pulled out all the stops. We used to say that. I used to play the organ. Pull out all the stops. Let it. Let all the volume go. <clears throat> We're going to do a wonderful thing. And that was my favorite picture. Lit all the candles. And Martha said, Mom, you need to hold the cake. I'll take a picture. I like the picture. All right, <clears throat> we are still in loving it. I'm loving it, and I pray you are. We are in Zechariah chapter 9 today. Zechariah 9, 
We're still into the burdens of the Lord, the word of the Lord. The burden of the word of the Lord against the land of Hadrach and Damascus, its resting place, for the eyes of men and all the tribes of Israel are on the Lord. Oh, isn't that good? All of the eyes of men and all of the tribes of Israel are on the Lord. How about we get to all the eyes of America and every other country you want to name? <clears throat> Maria could name Peru. They are on the Lord. Also against Hamat, whose borders on it. It borders on it. And against Tyre and Sidon, though they are very wise. For Tyre built herself a tower, heaped up silver like the dust, and gold like the mire of the streets. Behold, the Lord will cast her out. He will destroy her power in the sea, and she will be devoured by fire. Ashkelon shall see it and fear. Gaza also shall be very sorrowful, and Ekron, for he dried up her expectation. Wow, there's, there's, a, there's a very descriptive couple of words. I hope I never dry up anybody's expectation. But Ekron did. The king shall perish from Gaza, and Eshkelon shall not be inhabited. Woo! A mixed race shall settle in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. I will take away the blood from his mouth and the abominations from between his teeth. Wow. Woo! But he who remains... Even he shall be for our God, and shall be like a leader in Judah, an Ekron like a Jebusite. I will camp around my house because of the army, because of him who passes by, and him who returns. No more shall an oppressor pass through them, for now I have seen with my eyes. Yes, I meant to say that. Thank you for writing that, Connie. The eight I put on the cake, it's for new beginnings. Let's all say to ourselves, I'm going to enjoy new beginnings. A lot of areas that I don't think I did well in, I'm going to start over and do a much better job this time around. Let's, let's speak hope Let's, let's speak expectation for ourselves, right? Let's do it. I mean, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts, right? Let them be expressed. All right. <clears throat> Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Yerushalayim. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey. Ah, Zechariah was, was blessed to give that specific detail that then Jesus fulfilled. Lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. Peace, peace. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. 
For I have bent Judah my bow, fitted the bow with Ephraim, and raised up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and made you like the sword of a mighty man. And then the Lord will be seen over them, and his arrow will go forth like lightning. The Lord God will blow the trumpet. Boy, when I get to heaven, I pray I walk in my mansion, and I'm expecting to see the most gorgeous trumpet. Mm, mm, mm. My favorite instrument was the trumpet. But can you imagine hearing the Lord God blow a trumpet and go with whirlwinds from the south? The Lord of hosts will defend them. They shall devour and subdue with sling stones. They shall drink and roar as if with wine. They shall be filled with blood like basins like the corners of the altar, the Lord their God will save them in that day as the flock of his people. Oh, that'll be good. For they shall be like the jewels of a crown, lifted like a banner over his head. For how great is its goodness and how great its beauty Grain shall make the young men thrive, and new wine the young women. <laughs> you know, but I don't drink. I don't drink at all. I, I, don't, I never have. I didn't as a young person. I, I just didn't like it, didn't like the smell. But, it, you know, I take communion, so I've had a little red wine. But uh, I sat... I sat on these shingles for both the big breakfast and the big dinner. And I had myself just a tiny glass of wine. <laughs> just to help. <laughs> All right, we move right along to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation 17. And then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls. Remember that beautiful graphic of Catholics? And oh, I mean, Melissa, she's already on here. Got those graphics right on there. God bless you, Melissa. God bless you, honey. So all you gotta do is, and you can go see all the beautiful ones that Kathy has done. So this seven angel, one of them came, who had seven bowls, came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, and I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of a abominations and the filthiness of her fornication Ugh. and on her forehead a name was written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth wow man I would ever want something like that written on my forehead. I'm going to continue in the fear of the Lord. It's good for you. I saw the woman drunk with blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled. 
with great amazement. But the angel said to me, Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. Wow. I tell you what, that is a mystery. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel, whose names are not written. Let's, let's make this perfectly clear of what group of people this is. Whose names are not written. They never accepted Jesus Christ, who came and gave his life to pay their pricing. They never accepted him, turned him down. Whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads, I get this, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits there also there are seven kings. Five have fallen, and I believe we're talking about dynasties, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue for a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth. And he's not a new beginning. He must be a horrible beginning. He also is the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition. So their fate's already set. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour one hour, as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the Lamb, capital L on Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. Woo! Hallelujah. These are shouting words. These are shouting words. Let's celebrate. Let, let's have another piece of that birthday cake. Praise you, Jesus. And the Lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with him are called. Now get this, because this is we want to be one of these. They are called, chosen, and faithful. Oh, Let's write those three words down and say this, this is the goal for, for next year. This is the goal. Called, chosen, and faithful. And then he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Now take that in. Just think about that for a moment. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose and to be of one mind, and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. Till the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is that great city. The woman is a city which reigns over the kings of the earth. 
How about that explanation? Uh, that Go to Kathy's graphics. And we move right along, y'all, to Psalm 145. We're coming down the road to the last one in the last of the year. Uh, cup of coffee, you are so welcome. <clears throat> this is another praise of David. David. Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God, O King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day, every day, I will bless you. And I will praise your name forever and ever. And then there was a little, just a little line here. It isn't the whole song. This is really, when, when we sing it, we're singing Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We'll just let it go with that. And his greatness is unsearchable. How about that descriptive word? Unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. Now, if we want some goals, how about those for goals? To be gracious, let, let's us be gracious. Let us be full of compassion. Let us be slow to anger. And let us be great in mercy. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. All generations. Woo. The Lord upholds all who fall. The Lord will pick you back up and raises up all who are bowed down, weighed down. The eyes of all look expectantly to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is gracious in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. Oh, praise God. Let's stay in the glorious fear of the Lord, fear to disobey him. Fear to not serve him. All the good things. He will fulfill the desire for you of all those who fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him. But all the wicked. Got this? Now, are you ready for this? The wicked... I, I, you will not escape. If you are listening and you are still out there in wickedness and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, please, today is your day. Do it and find out how great he is. But all the wicked he will destroy. You can't get away with it. He knows he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord 
and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. Love it. Isn't that beautiful? And we wrap up today's reading, y'all, with Proverbs chapter 30, verse 32. Proverbs 30, 32. If you have been foolish in exalting yourself, and oh, that's a pride is a biggie in America. If you have been foolish, foolish, God calls it, in exalting yourself, or if you have devised evil, put your hand over your mouth. That's a very good idea. When you find yourself, your mouth is just not in the control that you would like it to be, put your hand over your mouth. If you're with people, act like you're suppressing a cough or something. Put your hand over your mouth. And give yourself a two-second lecture. And then come out with sweet words, right? <laughs> Good advice for us all from that proverb. Ooh-wee! Hallelujah. Well, blessings to each and every one of you. I pray that this is another wonderful day for you. It's going to be a wonderful day for me. Uh, for one thing, I'm going to rest. <laughs> I haven't done much of that. I'm going to lay prone and, and not sit on it. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to prayer. Father God, oh, our precious, wonderful, our wonderful Jesus. Oh, our wonderful Jesus, right there at the right-hand side of your Father, and how you have paved a beautiful way back for us to fellowship with our Father. Oh, thank you for it, Lord. We hold up Israel. We hold up Jerusalem. We hold up that nation. Yes, yes, we do. And we just are excited that you are bringing more and more of your people home you are establishing, you are expanding, you are, you are rebuilding, you are building new. I mean, it's just a little buzz place. Precious God, bless your people with peace in Jerusalem. We know that we can pray these words because you asked us to. We pray for peace, for peace your precious city, Jerusalem, and your people. And Lord, I hold up America to you. And Lord, I'm believing I'm seeing a turnaround. There's going to be a turnaround from wickedness. For one thing, all the saints have been praying, and God hears, and God has a time frame to answer, but he answers. Lord, we pray again. Turn this nation around, please. Take out of office and other places of importance rich people, perhaps, who wickedly are using their money and their power to work against America and people and, and a million other things we could name. Take them out, Lord. Take them out. And we desire that righteous people be back in and that we see America's finest hour begin, that she learn and that she repent. That's, that's, that's the clue word. Father God, and I say it from my mouth, I repent, Lord. I repent of all of the wrongs of this year. I repent all of the times of not having good patience or starting to get angry or whatever. I repent. I turn away from, I turn away from it. I put works with my mouth that says repent. And Lord, we'd ask that you would take the spots out of our garment is how you 
beautifully put it in the Word. Take these ugly, sinful spots out. Make them white, that our garments will become whiter and whiter in your presence. Lord, we'd ask that you would show us magnificent ways to serve you today. Lord, I, I doubt there's anybody that doesn't have an overabundance of food. Let's find wonderful people to give a meal to, to visit. Let's not let it sit and waste away in the refrigerator. Let's not become gluttons today, trying to eat it all. Let's share it out. Give us great and mighty things, Lord, to continue on serving you. Lord, people have prayed mighty prayers. There are still people who Christmas was not a happy thing. It, it was not happy. And Lord, I'm asking that they find relief of that today and that they will be able to get their eyes now off of being elbow to elbow with family that perhaps it didn't go well and that they will be able to reflect on you that it's your birthday that we are celebrating worshiping you. I'd ask Holy Spirit, you would minister to all people who had a very hard time. And all people, Lord, who were ill. They were ill, they weren't with their families, they, they felt sick, they couldn't eat, just whatever. Multitudes of, of things happening. Father God, please heal and deliver and bless from your mighty right hand of blessing. And we will continue on with our prayers, all of the ones that specifically we want to say to you. And I bless you today in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And I pray that we all just maintain that peace that passes all understanding. Have peace that you can't even describe. It passes all understanding. Love you all so very, very much. Bye-bye.